We're getting drone shots. Drone. You know, yeah. Right. We're, we're reenacting war scenes. It was huge, you know? And you got eight hours to do all this. Right? Got one, eight hours to get all this done. Yeah. The producer's pushing it because we ain't got money to be <laughs> on I told my mom and wife I would only have one. I'll drink the rest of his. <laughs> so we're going to be the collaborators do. We look out for each other. All right. Everybody, welcome to the show. This here, like what's going to happen tonight, is a show about making mistakes, recovering from mistakes, like having a big idea, telling all your friends about it, and then regretting that you told your friends about it because you kind of hit a bottom or you run out of money or you have to pay taxes. Like whatever it is, we make mistakes when there's something that we want to do and we want to do really great things in the world. All of us are like that, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking to Drew and Jerry out of Portland, Oregon. They are filmmakers, and they're making a film called Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, we're going to be talking about that tonight. I'm a little intimidated, uh, I won't lie. Filmmakers are cool, and writers are cool, and actors are cool, and I really want to be cool. Hey everybody, welcome my guests tonight, our, our guests tonight, uh, Drew and Jerry, uh, both filmmakers out of Portland? Portland, Oregon, is that where you guys are at? I represent Vancouver. Vancouver yeah, yeah. and represent Portland. represent Vancouver, I represent Portland. Shout out Vancouver. Right over, <laughs> right over the water, right over the water. Right over the water. So you, uh, uh, and the, both f filmmakers that made a film uh, called uh, Buffalo Soldiers. And we're gonna be talking about that uh, a little bit. Actually, why don't we just, why don't we just start there? Uh, you guys wanna tell me like, um, like what the what the project's about, what the, what the film's about? Sure, so uh, the, Buffalo Soldiers was an all-black regiment created by Congress act after the Civil War in 1866. Um, they fought in the Indian Wars. They were actually veterans of the Indian Wars. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, I mean, they pretty much helped clear up the western frontier for people to be able to migrate here yeah. to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, during that time, they had the, right after the Civil War, um, they opened up the, the Oregon Territory. Right, so they were giving away one square mile of land yeah. for every white male that would travel across the country, and at the same time they give away, you know, two two square miles of land if you had a family. Yeah. But at the same time they had these exclusion laws where people of color couldn't live here. But but, but they could make the way mm -hmm, for everybody yeah. else to come and live right, here. Right, yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the Buffalo Soldiers helped clear up the frontier. They came out and and help um, lay down the foundation, um, help clear up some of the national parks, um, you know, sustain the national parks. Yeah. What's well, a missing piece of American history, right? Not just African-American history, but all of our history. And the most people know about uh, the Buffalo Soldiers is the Bob Marley song. I know, right? that's me. <laughs> I like, <laughs> are both of you interested in history? Like, it's sort of, like, uh, by the way, like, I, I, I'm at least aware that most history is not a people's history. Mm -hmm. right? right, most history is what like whoever the victors are, they're the ones that tell the history, right? right? And right put it together, right, like right. whatever they want the story or the narrative to be, right. all the way through. But you, did you grow up kind of interested in, in digging on that and finding out what sort of like the truth is or what history is? And we well, so I mean, Drew and I come from two different places. Yeah, you know, uh, we got two different backgrounds. We end up coming together as brothers on this project to collaborate yeah. and you know make it meaningful. Mm -hmm. So you know my story is a little bit different from his, and he has he has his passions too. Yeah, but um, I can say that you know I grew up mostly in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, we had in Georgia we had Black History, we had Black History class. Yeah, I didn't hear hardly anything about the Buffalo Soldiers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I wasn't I wasn't really into history, yeah. to, to be specific, to be yeah. honest. You know, um, what, it wasn't until I became a filmmaker. What were what were you, what were you into growing up? Sports, yeah, you know, playing ball, hooping, yeah, chasing after the women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they went on for a long time. <laughs> right, right. <All> the, <laughs> they went on for a long time, so I couldn't get them. So I couldn't get, get them like I want to anymore. So when it's so like, down, I, I know what down. I need to do. I'll become an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that's, you know, and that yeah. too. I became an actor. So yeah, um, you know, so like my passions, my creative passions right now is something new to me. Over the past decade, yeah, so I just been experimenting with that. And um, and then Drew and I, you know, he reached out to me when he was, you know, passionate about the film. Yeah. And um, and I was learning more about the history. Yeah. Black history, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, the very limited pieces we have, you mm -hmm. know. And so 
here we are. Yeah. What was it? What's what's your background? So I, I moved here from Denver uh, yeah. in 2017. Yeah. And I was making music videos and web commercials. So and, you're doing filmmaking yeah, like for a long time. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I hadn't made a feature and wanted to uh, definitely um, evolve in my career. Yeah. Um, when I came out here, I wanted to get more involved in the film community. So I volunteered at the Langston Hughes Foundation in, oh, in Seattle, cool, cool. and yeah. they were doing a Juneteenth celebration. And I brought my family, my daughters and my wife with me. It was an opportunity for them to uh, to see the, the community and get involved with the community. And while we was there, I was catching some footage and my daughter and wife checked out the, the festival and I, I heard my daughter say, ooh, horses. And I looked up and I, I seen, um, these guys galloping up the hill on no horseback, way. dressed in union, uh, like garments. the uniforms, yeah, right? They got like the gray coming up, like yeah. And and like, and she asked me, "Who are they?" And I had forgot who they were myself. Yeah. And then it clicked to me that you know these are the Buffalo Soldiers. No way. And that's when I knew that we all needed to to know this. Now, did you, did you um, like, did you hear about him as an actor and that, that's how you guys connected? Yeah, actually, so I was living in Tacoma and I uh, moved down to Vancouver uh, because actually all the crew is across the water in yeah. Portland. I had, um, people were telling me about this guy that I should contact this guy to help me help me on the film. Yeah. And I eventually did. I seen his commercial and was like, yeah. What was that? What was the commercial that you saw? It was a Swiffer the Swiffer, commercial. Yeah, the Swiffer. No uh, way. Yeah, 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 the Swiffer Wet Jet with me and my son. It was a big national, grade A national piece that yeah. had billboards and stuff. Well, that's good. There. And not just that's that. good money, a national commercial. <laughs> like, oh man, it was amazing. Yeah, I need dude. more. I need yeah, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not just that he. Um, he had done a film also before, right? And you yeah. don't meet a lot of people that have done a whole film, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a hard process. And uh, with him having that background, um, wanting to make opportunities for uh, African Americans in the field, yeah. right? I definitely gravitated towards wanting Jerry to come and help on yeah, the project. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the filmmaking scene? Is it like a family? Like in the Northwest, like Portland and everything, like do you know each other in the business? And It's a small community. Uh, with starting this project, I knew that I had to build a community around the project, right? Yeah. This is not just, even though we're producing the film, directing the film, it's not our film, it's yeah. an American history film. So yeah. Uh, yeah, bringing everybody together on the film and building the community is what we wanted to do. You know, putting the team together, you had to build a, a, you know, a team around the project. Yeah. And especially if you want a, a project that's gonna be diverse, inclusive, accessible, yeah. and you know, and offer opportunities for everybody. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's usually a challenge. That's yeah. usually a challenge um, here. But there has been some overlap too with Seattle and Portland. You yeah. Know? So we get these projects, and, and I, I go audition with a lot of people from up here in Seattle. Okay. And then, but they see me up here too. When yeah. They have some of the bigger projects. Now you're you're acting as well, but I mean, in this particular case, is filmmaker. I mean, you're mm -hmm. uh, like, what roles do you guys play? The director, producer. We're co-directors uh, on the, on oh, the okay. project. I'm producing the yeah. project. Uh, the filmmaker behind the project. Yeah. All right. Well, more. Um, I have all sorts of questions about filmmaking, let him, let but him I, know. I, I think, so as soon as Jack takes out his phone and takes a picture of the drinks for like Instagram, I know that he's ready. I smell something. Yeah, I know. I smell something burning. I, Cause you, I know, you can hear the fire. Oh, like, no. like, it's gonna be hot. Coming through. <laughs> Jack, uh, what are we drinking? I know you're probably wrapping up a little bit. We, well, are, what, drinking what are, we are drinking the third Calvary cocktail. It's a <clears throat> rendition of the fourth regiment, but all black. Uh, in this case, we've got a black strap Rum for our base, molasses, rum trade was the major, major uh, two precursors to slaves even brought, being brought to America. Um, that being said, we backed that up with a little fermented honey, which is kind of something you would find here, something that would have been used by natives, something that was used by all of the indigenous people. Um, combine that with a little bit of red sandalwood from, from Africa, chinar, which is a, an amaro, a little bit of dubonet, which is a flavor it with what's called holy bark cinchona. And then there's a couple of savory aspects that I'll tell you about after we drop this bad boy down on you guys. All right, all right. It yeah. smells good. Did wow. you, did you understand smell the sandalwood. stuff he was talking about? You smell I sandalwood? sandalwood, I think. Have you had smoking drinks before? Like I have smoke not, drinks? this would be the first Are you time. serious? Yeah. So where's the film, is the film done? 
It'll be done uh, this spring, uh, oh, 20, right 2020. Now, uh, is the shooting done? Are you still, are you just in like post-production? Yeah, we're in post-production yeah. now. Right on, right animation, on. Animation, all that good stuff. Anima oh, right, we right, right. We got a lot of animation. We, uh, this is a real um, animation oh and reenactment. All black. This is, <laughs> that's it, right? <laughs> like, okay, yeah, no, take, it go. looks, uh, it looks thick. I'm going last because I don't want to look desperate. Because right, I don't want to look desperate. I've been waiting on this. No, you We got started. You're like, when we start drinking? Yeah, when we gonna start drinking? All right. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers right, to the Buffalo cheers Soldiers. Works. Oh cheers. man. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Ready and for it. Oh wow. That's good. That's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Got a little kick to it too. It's flavorful. Little kick. Yeah. I told mm. my mom and wife I would only have one. Did, is that what you told them? Yeah, I did, I did. I, you, you, I, prom <laughs> I promised them they were nervous. <laughs> I didn't make no promises. You didn't make <laughs> no, <so>. like, <laughs> I'll drink the rest of his if you need me to. So we're going to be what the collaborators do. We look right. out for each other. All right. The biggest thing about documentaries is pulling together a crew of people from all over it, not just the crew itself, but you know, doing the research, exercising yeah. your due diligence, yeah, learning the story, especially if you're doing history, learning the history, yeah, and being precise because yeah. people people are watching. There's, there's a lot that goes into that, yeah. Versus uh, sound studio going and making a commercial, yeah, just going you know, in. There's a lot yeah. going to that too, but there, you know, that's right. a turnover in like two days. Like a yeah, documentary on average take five to seven years, yeah, you know, and um, so you know, project management is being diligent. Pushing the project, yeah. Pushing on, moving forward. Um, that's what Drew's been doing as, yeah. as primary producer of the documentary. Yeah. So, what would you say your styles are as as directors? Then working with working with people and putting stuff together, like. So I, I mostly do behind um, offset, and Jerry does a lot of the onset type oh, of work. Okay. So I do. I put all the budget, the yeah, people yeah, together, yeah. location. Yeah. Jerry runs the camera. You know what I mean. Talks on the. To the yeah. interviews mostly. We kind of like sometimes like the yin and the yang, but it, you know, like it comes together real nicely. And doing the research for this, like how how personal are you able to get in doing this type of research? Like, do you get the names of Buffalo Soldiers, their stories, their families, like where they where they ended up? Like, do you learn about that type of stuff all the way through? Absolutely. We uh, we hire research uh, students, uh, Portland State University. Yeah. The movie follows um, Moses Williams, Oregon's first Medal of Honor recipient. Mo Moses Williams? Moses Williams. He's yeah. our main uh, person, historical figure who, you know, takes us through the Buffalo Soldiers journey. Like the myth, the myth is like uh, Grizzly Adams. Mm -hmm. That's the myth. Like exactly. the mountain men, the mountain men made it possible and safe for it's the Buffalo in, right? Soldiers. It's the Buffalo Soldiers. Right. Right. Play, I mean, a significant in, right? role in in everything that that's happened here on the Western Frontier. Yeah. You know, but you know, it's, it all get washed over. And then you look at some of these soldiers, these men of honor. I want to make sure I say that about the Buffalo Soldiers. They yeah. are men of honor. Yeah. And and should be respected as such. But a lot of a lot of their accomplishments were overcome by white lieutenants and soldiers they go out and help you know go in and significantly fight a battle you know it'll be their lieutenant who gets all the credit for it mm -hmm. you know and that's the stuff that we've been learning through doing the research on this whole documentary you've been yeah. learning a whole lot of the history and what's been whitewashed yeah Tell me about some of the like the hardships you ran into and in trying to put this together tell me where it's been like uh, where it's been rough like trying to make this happen. You know, fundraising has been rough, right? Um, getting people to see the vision at first on, you know, what it what it could be. We came a long way and it started back in June of last year, right? And we've been able to pull a, a great community together, but it hasn't been easy at first, right? What do you guys do when you uh when you get a little uh, stressed out about everything you're putting together. I mean, basically, you know, he gets stressed, he, he dump it on me. Hey man, <laughs> this, 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 and this, I get stressed, I dump it on him. <laughs> so I guess we kind of um, help each other out. Yeah. You know? The sense I get from both of you, and I could be totally wrong, that the, the challenges are always there. Yeah. That you're just used to the challenges. 
Yeah, you just like work I think around that that's them the sense. or yeah. knock them down or figure them out. It's yeah. problem solving the whole time. Right? Yeah. Well, right. there was times where, you know, I thought it was a dumb idea, right, to make a documentary. I didn't know how I was going to actually pull it together, right? It was hard to, you know, to start something from, yeah. from nothing, right? Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And have, but we slowly started building this community and, and, people started gravitating and it was it's actually amazing all the resources we had available to us yeah. once we got going from locations right they want to be a part of it um, locations uh, actors yeah horses yeah. right <laughs> those horses want to be a part of, of money it. for horse trainers yeah. right and we yeah. had the you know the buffalo soldiers of seattle living history group They've been, you know, completely on board with helping us. And they so, had yeah, the horses already trained. The then. Mo like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the motorcycle club, Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club, Seattle, Tacoma in the film. We have the Moses Williams chapter out of Portland that's in the film. We have the Buffalo Soldiers uh, Museum in Tacoma, right? There's so many uh, things right here up under your nose, so many groups, so many legacy groups right up under your nose. Yeah. You just got to look. Oh. And they were all completely for us making the film. It takes, you know, it takes a while to get there though. Yeah. You know, um, it, it feels good now that, you know, all the hard work that goes into it from the beginning. Yeah. Get people to buy in, get mm -hmm. people to trust you, you know, especially as black men who are coming in trying to make the film about black history. Yeah. And it's like, who are these guys? And being able to sell that, you know. But then now, like, like you say, like now the momentum's here. Yeah. And it's starting to really take off for us, and it feels good. It feels yeah. good to come in and, and be here. Yeah. To be a part of this and talk about it with you guys, you know? No, it's it's phenomenal. It was a lot more stressful <clears throat> than I would have thought with all the horses and, the, you know what I'm saying? So we needed all the people, you know, food, right? It was, yeah. It was, it was, it was, we get drone shots. Drone shots. Yeah. Right? We're we, we reenacting war scenes. It was huge, you know, it and it's like, huge. and we got and, and Natives a lot of there, us have right. never met really? before. Really, yeah, everybody yeah, there, yeah. And you never, never met. met before, and it, you know, so those are the challenges within itself. Yeah. Like, how do you overcome this? And you got eight hours to do all this, <laughs> right? You got one, eight hours to get all this done because someone got to be somewhere at some given moment of time. Or the yeah. producers pushing it because we ain't got money to be. The set doesn't be too much drama. No, right? Yeah. It, it more on the. We the hustle and fundraising side, that's the part that keeps you up at night. That's yeah. the part that makes you bang your head up against the wall like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And then like, what the hell else am I going to do about right, this? Right, 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 right. You guys, like, is this uh, the only thing you work on or you work on other things too? Like, is it, are you totally dedicated to this right now? I'm working on this 100%, yeah. um, right? I, I, I recently, we got a fellowship uh, for the project with Firelight. Um, so, yeah, this is all I do. This is all you do. Tell me about this uh, Firelight Fellowship. Like, what, what is that? So, Firelight, Firelight Media is out of New York. Uh, the great filmmaker Stanley Nelson is his his his, his fellowship. Yeah, uh, he did the film Black Panthers: Vanguards of Freedom. This is the the guy who is taking us under his wing to what? to help us. Um, you say he's taking you under wing. Like you talk to him, you like consult with him. Yeah, like, I think he gives he us out a, hang a out? creative like, producer that helps with us helps us get the the film in top shape. Yeah, we go on retreats, uh, grants. Um, now, did you did you funding. did you pitch him or did he discover you? We applied. Yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, 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 yeah. It were one out of you know twelve out of you know God knows how many people applied. Wow. Right? So, so there are twelve that he that he's, that he's working with. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you know any of the others? I mean. Like, do you get to work with the other? Is it like a community? Or? Yeah, it's a community. Um, we all email and we do um, online collaboration. Yeah, all documentary filmmakers too. Yep, all documentary yeah. filmmakers. I didn't check out some of their trailers. They yeah. all look great too. So oh, we are man. in like a, an exclusive group. I feel like. How do you then like get it out for people to see? You guys know like. Like distribution on these types of things is it something where you like you you submit to film festivals? Yeah, we're gonna do it? film festivals, um, and Firelight's gonna help us with our distribution. So we yeah. don't quite know where 
what platform it's going on, but we will be doing local screenings, yeah. touring, and All right. whatnot like that. Spring 2020. Spring 2020. Right. What do you, what do you, uh, I, I know this is your focus. I know this is like the, where, what you're focusing on to kind of come to fruition. Like you start thinking about at all what you might do, what you might do next? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to continue on this path and telling these untold um, African American stories. Yeah. So that we all know. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of them that we are unfamiliar with and that we should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the next one is going to be, um, Black Hollywood. Black, oh, yeah. yes. 1930. 1930? Minstro, Black Hollywood. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. I like, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Like, I, I love this. I love oh, learning man. about this. I love, I, like, I love what you're doing. One more drink. Uh, you guys have a special way you like to say, uh, you just do cheers. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. toast, whatever. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much for being on the to show. To the Buffalo Soldiers. To the Buffalo Soldiers. Oh, the Pacific man. Northwest. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. Thank right. you. Thank you. Oh, man, that was amazing. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Jerry. And if you have your own mistakes, go to fups.com. I'd love to have you on the show.